Hello, 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 cheers, Kevin here, and welcome back to some more Exapunks. And can I just say, ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited to be here. Um, man, this is a fun game. Now, I did say in the last uh, video that we would go back into our Hack Our Hearts solution and uh, come up with a better one. However, <laughs> I, I actually, the, the idea that I had in my head wasn't as good as I thought it was. If we pop open the old solution, we basically just used a bunch of no ops to try and make sure these things were synced up, and we copied the value into... Uh, the M register twice, and then just waited and uh, made sure that we were receiving stuff and sending them off. And it did work. I feel like it could be done better, but the, the, the thing, the, the solution does not strike me at this time. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, although one thing I have noticed, I've been trying to avoid spoilers for this game, but I did encounter one thing um, that I actually missed in the zine, and that is that we can use the T register uh, as a general register. Now, of course, that's not helpful when we want to check if something is true or false, but if we're not doing that, we basically have two registers we can play with, so I'm sure that there are some solutions that we missed over because I didn't, that hadn't occurred to me. But let's move on. KGOG TV programming hub, compete with an opponent for control over a television station. All right, so this is our first uh, PVP of the thing. All right, it's an NPC, but you're going to join in on a hacker battle? But do you never say anything in the chat room? Exa speak louder than words. I like that. I guess the only thing that really matters is your ability, in theory. It's a nice idea. Okay, so. To win this battle, you must make your movies play for longer than your opponents. The movie will play when the file is the only movie file sitting in a channel host. Okay. Gain one point every cycle um, for each of your movies that is playing. Files 210 and 211. Lose one point every cycle that a movie file that isn't yours is held by an X that you control or is sitting in your host? Is sitting in my host, huh? This is the point every cycle that isn't mine is held or is sitting in my host. <clears throat> Lose one point every time we execute a kill instruction. See the hacker battle domination in the second issue of the zine. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. Let's take a look at the manual. All right, so we have the gamer issue zine. What, where are we looking for? Hacker battle domination on page four. All right, there is a cycle limit, so there's uh, there's a storage limit, um, and accept it, yeah, cause an exit to stall until one more space is freed. State of the network can be difficult to ascertain. Files will be moved around by your opponent when you least expect it. Develop for flexibility and maybe take a look at another uh, guest article about error handling in issue one, runtime errors and how to exploit them. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna let's let's try some things. Let's let's. We're going to obviously replicate ourselves a bunch of times, but I want to try something. I guess, so we can't get to the opponent. Oh, we can select the opponent, right? Mutex. Okay, so we only have the one possible opponent. Um, they're already playing a thing in channel nine, which stinks. Let's link into 800. And then we're going to create a bunch of X's, I guess. So let's mark uh, spawn. We'll say we have a, a spawn page. So basically we're writing a bunch of programs using these markers. Uh, spawn is going to repl a bunch of different things, and we'll do that later. Note to do. Can I put this there? Because I like how that's formatted. Okay. Let's uh, mark a dominate channel 9. Uh, let's, uh -huh. We'll call it Chan 9. Um, and we'll just say, the, so the idea for Chan 9... Wait a second. Okay, how, how about this for a strategy? Um, we... It's the only movie file sitting in a channel host. All we're going to do is try and get into one of these channels right away and then fill it up with Xs that don't let anybody else in. That seems reasonable. Let's uh huh. Let's let's try that just as a as an initial strategy. We're going to grab um, our file 210 and uh link to 867 and drop and then REPL uh, dummy and we've got to create a mark dummy and that's just going to go jump to dummy so a dummy is going to do nothing except just stay there and block off the game board okay so we'll replicate a dummy uh let's see actually no a dummy is going to repl another dummy and then jump to dummy so a dummy is going to permanently try <laughs> it's going to permanently try and be evil uh and yeah we can just keep that mark there uh, let's see how that how that runs. So we grab a file, we jump in there. Oh no, that did not work at all. And we're not even able to replicate more dummy. Why are we not able to replicate? We should have enough space to be replicating more dummy. 
Tape conflict, right. So that one's not working. But okay. Um, uh, what if we went to 828? I'm imagining this is not gonna, I, I mean, who knows? They could do different stuff each time anyway. No, they're jumping with, aha, so they're taking both of these. Let's let's go ahead and say that we're, sure, we'll lose a point. Uh, kill, and then kill again. I think we'll be okay if we do that, because they're gonna jump when we jump, and then they're gonna jump again, and we should kill them both off, aren't we? Yes, and then we're the only one there. And now we win. We're winning points. Ha! Brilliant. We won all of the games. Okay, so that's... I mean, that's one strategy. Let's let's go ahead and edit that because we don't need to uh, do any of this dummy stuff yet. Uh, but yeah, okay, so that's, that's one strategy. We can just look at how the opponent is set up and go, hey, if we jump in there at the exact same time, unless they immediately try and kill us, uh, we're going to win. So... And then, yeah, we, we gain some more points by dropping the files um so i guess yeah let's let's make our score a little better why not uh we'll link negative one we'll grab what is it we grab 210 so we'll grab 211 and then we'll link 867 and drop and then link negative one um and we are losing points that this is sitting in our host no we're not losing points that this is sitting um Let's see, maybe we'll play longer than me. Is the opponent gonna get points for the, the one that's already in the channel? Let's let's watch this play through. Um, yeah, no, the opponent's get, opponent is getting no points, so we don't need to worry about taking out 265, that's fine. Um, so then, yeah, we can just go ahead and do that, and we could even halt, I mean, it, it will halt. So there we go. We're just gonna, we're gonna win. All right, so uh, we'll return to desktop and move on to the next one. You're off to a good start. I knew you were good at what you did. Even after you forgot, you picked it right back up. That's why I contacted you. What do you really want? All I've ever wanted you to do is a little hacking for me. That's it, really. Moss came into the TV station and beat me. Okay, so Moss is apparently us. What if Moss is back? Oh my, okay. Tech Redshift, I guess that's, I don't know what our name is, all right. Okay, Tech Redshift. Gain access to the Tech Redshift development. Again. Oh, this, so this is that game thing that we... Why do you think the guest gave you this? I guess he thought I might like playing with it. Is that something you do? How considerate of him. Such a nice guy. Too bad the dev kit is password protected. He should have thought of that. Better not let that stop you. Okay, so we've got to get in here, I guess. There is an unknown three-digit code, such as 473, that when entered one digit at a time into pass will unlock the sequence. Okay, find the three-digit code. Create a file in your host that contains the code as a sequence of three values, followed by the development kit's RDK ID. So we need to find, I'll say, so there's an RDK ID. All right, so we can show the goal and we know that the password in this one test one is 473. So let's just go ahead and uh, copy those for now so that we can see what's behind this locked thing so we can actually get the, right, the, the tail end of our script. So uh, we will uh, copy uh, four into pass, Oops, sorry, four into pass, copy, seven into pass, copy, three into pass, and then no op, yeah, can we do that, there we go, okay, so, uh, followed by the development arc, ID, where do we get this ID, core dump, core dump, I don't see this ID. 199. Oh, it's okay. So it's the first thing in file number 199. Okay, so the first thing in file number 199. So uh, link to whatever. Ah, I wasn't paying enough attention. Something. Whoa, my keyboard is lagging. Whoa. All right, there we go. Um, note, link to something, link to do. Um, and then grab 199 and then copy F. Uh, we could copy the file or we could, yeah, we can just copy F to X and then drop and then make and then copy, uh, let's see. Oh, so we need, to, yeah, oh, we need to, okay, hang on. We need to create a file in the host that contains the code as the sequence of three values followed by the development kits. Are, okay, so instead we will copy um, uh, F to M and we'll have a separate bot just wait. Um, so we're gonna copy M into, well, we'll make a file. Copy M into F, copy M into F, copy 
m into f, copy m into f, and then drop the file. So its job is just gonna be to write this for values and make our file and be done. Okay, I think we're gonna need to do some repling to iterate on how we, uh, how we do these, but we'll see. Okay, uh, let's step through this again real quick just so I can get the, okay, we're linking to 800. Fair enough. So this should pass our first test because we're hard coding the password values. Jump again, 473, jump in, grab 199, send it along. Oh, except we're not, yeah, we're not typing the, uh, <laughs> we're not entering the uh, values. So that's not great. Um, wait a second. Well, okay, whatever. Um, for now, copy four to M. Ugh. And seven and three to M, just to get this to verify that this works in the one case. Seven and three, and we go over there. We get the file. We're done, and we're done, and that passes. But the next one will not. Okay. So now we need to figure out how we're going to generate the correct sequence and we need to basically test out all of the possibilities right um, and actually we can use this early failure um, to make sure that we don't bother writing anything to M right that makes sense so this will be we'll mark this as an attempt and we'll say well we can note success uh, here and that means we can copy the values but how are we gonna get those values that's the tricky question and I think now what we need to use is uh, a little bit of modulo math, and we can use a T register, which is going to make this a little bit easy, I think. Um, let's grab. So let's um, so let's say that we're going to encode our solutions as a three-digit uh, number, right? So we'll start. The first number that we'll try is zero. Then we'll try one, and of course, when we try that out, it's going to be zero zero one and zero 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 and then zero zero two, etc. So how do we get the hundreds place? Well, we just have to divide the thing by 100 and then we'll get the number. We can do integer uh, division and that'll just truncate everything else. So to get so to, to go from let's let's take an example number. So we'll say four, five, six um, to get four. We're going to need to uh, divide. Uh, let's say that's that's in in X. We're gonna to need to divide X by t uh, 100 and put that into the T register. Ha ha, we can use that in, in the T register and then we're done. So T gets four, that's great. Um, uh, let's just label these. Uh, T is four, good. Okay, now we need to get the, to get the middle digit, we'll take, uh, we'll divide X by 10 That'll give us uh, 45 in the T register. And then we can go mod I X 10, or sorry, T 10 T. And that should get us T equals five. And then uh, to get the very last one, we should just be able to take, uh, let's see. So to get T to equal six, we should just be able to say mod I T 10, or sorry, X. 10 T. So modulus is going to get the remainder after dividing by a number. So uh, let me verify that that's absolutely correct just to make sure I don't make a fool of myself. Oh man, I can't do visual select because this is not Vim. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, well, let's let's replace this into actual code. Uh, we'll just copy 456 into X and then we'll step through this, right? So we'll say DV, DV X 100 into T. That'll do our first one. Um, yeah, we can just delete this up here now that we've thought through the problem. Um, we'll say divi x t. Yeah, okay, we've already got these in place. So let's step through these. Uh, okay, so four, five, six. Are we gonna get four? Yes, we are. Okay, now we need to do two steps to get five. Oh, that did not do five. Uh, or, uh, yes, no, that's right. We wanted five and then we got six. Cool, so that's how we get the three digits out from our number. All we have to do then is put these in as our potential solution. So uh, we assume that X is already set. So we'll say divi X 100 T, and then we'll just copy T into pass. Then we'll say divi X 10 T, copy uh, mod I T 10 T, copy T into pass. 
And of course, we're gonna have to repeat this, which is kind of frustrating, but oh well, what are you gonna do? I mean, I suppose we could write it to a file and read it out again, but um, it's not it's not too much repetition. Um, and then just mod i x 10 into t and then copy t into pass. And then we run and we try and jump into the next room and assuming we've succeeded, then we can do the same thing here. Um, just instead of copying to pass, we'll copy into the M register. So we know we've succeeded, so we'll just regenerate those values. And um, although actually, you know, we could just send X over the wire and make X B worry about decoding, but whatever, it, that's fine. Okay, so now all we have to do is kind of set up the initial, uh, the branching. So we will say, uh, should we try zero? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, well, okay, we are gonna get overloaded though if we continue to create too many REPLs. Um, let's mark spawn and we'll say, yeah, if we create too many REPLs at a time. So we need to make sure that they have enough time to do the calculations, test them and die before we try and spawn a new one. Um, oh, you know what, we can, we can just do that. We can, can we increment? No, we can't increment X. Uh, yeah, no, we can increment X here. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we'll add I X one, store that in X, and then we'll just REPL another attempter. We'll say, hey, we're done. Uh, and then we'll spawn, before we leave, we're gonna spawn someone else that can go ahead and, and start this. Okay, so let's give this a shot. This should work, I think. All right, XA is gonna go through there. It is, it has zero in there. So it's gonna say, hey, cool. I'm gonna send zero, zero, zero. And I'm off. I'm gonna create another one. But in the meantime, I'm jumping away. And of course it died because it couldn't. This one is trying zero, zero, one. And there we go, zero, zero, two. Okay, perfect. And we're rapidly going, I mean rapidly, going to go through this entire sequence. <laughs> we should eventually find it. Once we do, we'll continue on the rest of our code and everything will work just fine. It's gonna take <laughs> quite a few cycles though. Uh, what was it? It was 473. Let's, let's speed this along. Oh, that didn't go so well. Why didn't that, why, what happened there? Oh, okay, so yeah, there's a problem in that this doesn't lock, once it's unlocked, it stays unlocked. And so we can continue to send random junk to password, jump in there and go, hey, we can't, well, it should fail because it can't find the file, right? Oh no, it's blocked because it's trying to write the stuff. Uh-huh, okay, that's fine. Um, hmm. Uh, yeah, so we don't want to, when we're copying stuff to the M register, uh, we need to make sure <laughs> that there's someone there to read it. Uh, we should, yeah, if we grab the file first, that should ensure that we are only, only the first person in there uh, is able to do it. But that doesn't solve the problem at the very end. So yeah, so this is still helping a little bit. Uh, we've got somebody that's, that's jumping over there and then immediately dying, but it's still spawning the, it's saying, hey, I found my way in. I'm gonna create the next version that has a higher X value. Uh, and you stay behind and hooray for that. So that's tricky. How are we going to solve that problem? Um, we can check if there's anything uh, in the, yeah. We can, so this may not catch the first one, but it'll catch them eventually. We can test. Yeah, we need to use the T register. <laughs> Test if we can read M, so M read. So test if there's information in M read. This will catch one of them because this one's communicating stuff back to back to the original bot. And if so, true jump uh, to done. And then it won't go through and do any spawning at all. Uh, mark done. Yeah, and there we go. We'll just jump it to the end of its program. And if we run this, oh no. The one holding the actual file, what? Copy T to M. This one has the file and it's trying to send it along. And somehow, are we writing to M more than once? Test if it's writable. Oh, cause yeah, testing if we can read it. Is that gonna consume something? No, it shouldn't. 
Um, you know, we can make our, our done version be the version of XB, or our XB, can't we? Um, uh, yeah, so we'll make a file, copy M to F four times, and then we'll just return home and drop, maybe? And then just don't have an XB? That seemed to get us close. What is in this, what is in our file 400 though? Uh, 474, 474. Oh, shoot. No, that's somehow one value greater. Okay, for some reason it's the successor that's managing to get in despite the fact that 473 is the actual combination. Uh, whatever, that's fine. <laughs> oh, right, because we add one to X right there. Right, before we spawn the attempt. Okay, if we have succeeded, we will sub I X one X, and then that should do it. There we go, test run complete. It's taken a lot of cycles. Um, I mean, but we're brute forcing this password, so. And there we go, all right, X <laughs> more cycles than is necessary, more larger size than is necessary. <laughs> but, I mean, but we did it. Um, I mean, I suppose if we wanted to, we could, ah, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's let's do this. Let's set, uh, or sorry, copy 999 into X and count down from 999. I'm gonna assume that's gonna be faster, right? Uh, and then we can just replace these subs and these ads because I'm assuming that zero is not gonna be the password, right? Two digit passwords are not something. So we should shave off 10% maybe. And then, yeah, if we've succeeded, then we'll add the I back in. And yeah, that should, so it's gonna add one more cycle at the, just for this very first one that doesn't spawn out a bunch of stuff. And who knows? Uh, well, no, that's <laughs> that seemed to make it worse. All right, I mean, fair enough. I guess more of the the combinations seem to be after uh, after 500 or before 500 than after it. So uh, whatever, that's fine. We'll we'll switch it back. Okay. So Gast used to work at the game studio. Yeah, he was a programmer. I wonder what he was uh, what that was like. Probably terrible. Deadlines, requirements, other people. Yeah, I can see that. All right, what have we got going on? Redshift Homebrew. Create your own game for Tech Redshift optional. And meeting with Ember too. Let's uh, play the cutscene. We'll jump into Redshift Homebrew uh, in the next video. Let's look at the cutscene. Continue the discussion of morality okay. with Ember too. I have a real question to ask you. I'm ready. There's a trolley on a track heading toward five people. Yes, Three another trolley. Five people are vegetarians. Okay. Go on. There's a switch you can throw that will shut down a meatpacking facility that is located down the road. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, the switch will also prevent the train from stopping because because. Wait, I may have reversed something. Recalibrating. There are too many variables here. Okay, let's return <laughs> to this later. I need more data first. Okay, okay so we can now. kill the vegetarians, but also shut down the meat processing, fac processing factory. Oh boy. Okay, well, uh, we will, let's, let's, let's take a peek at this. You're really going to make a game with this? Why? I'm not offering a reward for it. Not everything I do is for you. Oh, it's one of those intangible things. A sense of accomplishment, self-actualization. I'm not good at abstract concepts. I'll have to observe you closely. All right. Interesting. Um, okay, so it looks like, and since this is optional, um, we're brought this. Oh, two D and three D. Start lots of lots of cool lots of inputs and stuff. We're able to. Make. Okay, and we can see how this is how this stuff is coming in. So there's the input. Yeah, we get a one and a and a, yeah a negative one x y and z. And start and two D and three D. Cool. So those are inputs, and then we can write a whole bunch of output. Presumably, we're going to have to look at the zine to figure out all sorts of clever things we can do with that. But we'll have to do that in a future video. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you're doing well, and I will see you then. Cheers.